morning, David Chapel family, friends, and guests. We want to just invite you to pray with us wherever you are in your home as we prepare to bless the name of the Lord and bring glory and honor to his name. He is a great God. So let's join us in prayer as we just give God the glory. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you are an awesome God. You are a mighty God. You are a wonderful God. Lord God, and we thank you, Lord God,
David Chapel's virtual worship experience on this Palm Sunday. Did you hear my word experience? We want you this morning to have a worship experience. Thank you for allowing us to come into your home today. For those of you who are our Facebook and YouTube viewers, I know you're there. I can't see you, but I know you're there. Let us know that you are involved and participating in this experience today by giving us your comments as you watch us. Are you ready? Are you ready for this worship experience? Come on now, get up where you are and join us today. See what I'm doing? I'm getting my bread. Let's prepare to eat. Jesus said, this is my body, which is given for you. Take your cup, your drink, whatever it is that you are using to symbolize his blood. We will drink in remembrance of him. Pray that as you have taken that, that you will reflect upon the meaning that we are celebrating in this moment the Lord's death, burial, 
and resurrection. Be blessed. now time for tithes and offering as we worship God in our giving. As 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 7 reminds us, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly nor under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. As we pause to offer our gift, we have four ways to give right now or at any time during the week. One, you may drop off your giving at our mail slot located on the MLK side of our church. Two, text DCMBC to 77977 from your phone. Three, download the PushPay app and search for David Chapel Missionary Baptist Church. And four, you may mail in your giving to our church address, 2211 East Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, Austin, Texas, 78702. When we give, our offering helps meet the needs of the community, aids in providing benevolence, and invest in the spiritual development of our children and our youth. Our giving honors God and enables us to further our mission as a church with the heart for the community. Thank you and God bless.
could make you higher. Because you are my God. I'll lift you above every circumstance and situation. I will exalt you. Oh, yes, I will. I will exalt you. I will exalt you. Oh, you are my God. Come on, lift up with one voice.
because the Holy God is with you, with me. Let's not fear. Time to get your Bible. Turn to Exodus chapter 6, verses 9 through 12. Thank you for allowing me to come into your home, around your dining room table, in your den, wherever you're watching today. Continue to experience what the Lord is saying to you. Exodus chapter 6, verses 9 through 12, out of the New Living Translation. So Moses told the people of Israel what the Lord has said, but they refused to listen anymore. They had become too discouraged by the brutality of their slavery. Then the Lord said to Moses, go back to Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and tell him to let the people of Israel leave his country. But Lord, Moses objected, my own people won't listen to me anymore. So how can I expect Pharaoh to listen? I'm such a clumsy speaker. Help me now. Discouragement's dilemma. Discouragement's dilemma. Today is Palm Sunday, 2020. For Christians who in America are under the threats and the attacks of the coronavirus, a pandemic affecting the whole world. Many are sick, many are suffering tired, anxious, isolated, angry, confused, frustrated, and fearful. Yet this day, Palm Sunday, urges us to see and somehow experience the celebration and the applause that Jesus received as he moved toward his crucifixion as a very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches, palm leaves from the trees, and spread them on the road. Crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. But a few days later, these attitudes change to discouragement. When another crowd cried, crucify him. Discouragement is a creeper always lurking in the background of our lives, wanting to afflict us, you and me, wanting to take away or empty us of our courage, striving to show itself discouragement, mighty and strong, continually looking for opportunities to be a thief that comes to steal and to kill and to destroy the peace, the joy, and sometimes the applause that God wants you and me to have. As you live through this pandemic, are you discouraged? You see, for the people of God, those of us who are Faithful people, discouragement faces a dilemma when it cannot snatch our peace, our joy, our confidence that the Lord wants and gives us to experience. Dilemma 
that discouragement faces is will discouragement leave us alone or not? Will discouragement capture us or not? You see, that's exactly what discouragement wants to do. It wants to capture us and keep us in captivity, somewhat like God's people in Exodus faced when they were in captivity in Egypt. Remember their circumstance? Exodus 4 and 31 says that Moses and Aaron told them, the people of God, that the Lord has seen their affliction. And the Lord their God was concerned about them and had seen their misery. When they realized what the Lord had seen, the Bible says they bowed down and worshipped him. Exodus 5 and 1 then says, afterwards Moses, and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says, Let my people go so that they may hold a festival to me in the desert. Pharaoh believed because Moses and Aaron came to them and what he was seeing about the obviousness of their discouragement, he believed they were lazy. And so he increased their labor and they, God's people, became discouraged. I wish I could look at you right now. Are you discouraged because you feel captive by this moment? this time in your life, you need to know that God, like with those in Egypt, he's concerned about whatever it is that is afflicting you, whether or not it relates to this pandemic. He sees your misery. He sees how you feel beneath your skin. You can be vulnerable right now in your home. You can be transparent. You can be honest. Admit that you're struggling with discouragement. The enemy is trying to take your courage out of you. But God saw their affliction and he sees yours too. So this morning, I want you to take the long view. Not just in this moment. Oh well, an Amber Alert is probably for you. Those of you who are discouraged, there's an alert going on right now. Look beyond this moment, the long view. Don't just focus on what it is you're dealing with right now. Defeat discouragement's efforts by being reminded repeatedly that God has not forgotten you. He came to them and said, I am the Lord of the covenant. I made an agreement with you. I am your God. You are my people. I will honor that. Right now, this Palm Sunday, God has not forgotten you. That's what they learned. They also learned that God has not failed you. Rough right now, isn't it? Confined to your own. Even when you leave and you want to go and get groceries or food or get something quickly, you look around and everybody's closed down. You don't have enough supplies. And you are worried about your money. But the earth is Lord's and the fullness thereof. And they that dwell therein, God is saying to you, even right now, I've not failed you. Yeah. Yeah. You see, before God released the plagues on Egypt, 
because of how Egypt was treating them and how the Pharaoh was afflicting them, he told Moses and Aaron again to tell Pharaoh, let my people go. God is speaking right now in this season, speaking to whatever it is that's afflicting you right now, saying to this pandemic, whatever is holding you captive, before the pandemic, my God, say it with me, my God, I hear you, my God says, let my people go. God has not forgotten you because he's the God of the covenant with you. God has not failed you. And he will never give up on you. Here's some more good news. Even right now, although you may not see it, God is fashioning you. Ephesians 2 says, we are God's workmanship. All of this that you're facing, God is at work, not only around you, but in you. He's doing something, trying to have you to reconsider this phase of your life. Remember, they were in Egypt, in captivity, and afflicted. But God was getting them ready for the departure from captivity. Getting them ready for their deliverance from that which afflicted them and getting them ready to enter into the promised land. God is using, I'm absolutely convinced right now, what we are experiencing through this pandemic, and there were some things you were experiencing even before then. He's using those as an opportunity to reshape, to release, and to reward you. That's why the songwriter says, God will take care of you. Yeah. Come closer. Be not dismayed. Yes, yes. Whatever be time. Yes, sir. Yes. Are you close? Are you listening? Are you close not just physically to whatever it is you're watching, but in your spirit? Are you close? Yes, sir. God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. And listen to the last stanza of that song. No matter what may be your test, God will. A test? A test? For a testimony? A test? Yes, sir. Learn, the songwriter says, O oh, weary one, recline, recline, recline upon his breast. I'm absolutely convinced. It's my hope. It's my confidence for me in this season and beyond. I'm absolutely certain that God has not given me the spirit of fear because I know God will yeah. take care of me. And when you buy into that, when you claim that in your spirit, Discouragement has a dilemma. 
That's what the Bible tells us. New Testament that, that when Satan sees that he can't get in, he leaves us alone. Are you here today? We're going to give you an opportunity now to become a Christian disciple, a follower of Jesus Christ. Not, not a church member, but a disciple, a learner of him. Taking your Bible, taking your scripture, learning of him, and then following him. Yes, you can follow him right now, even if you have to stay sheltered in your home. You can follow him. First, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. That is an important question for you about your destiny. Right there in the confines of your home, wherever you are. Ask yourself this question. If the Lord were to come to you right now, if you were never able, David Chapel, members to come out to this Sanctuary that's empty right now. If if you were to come, we're not able to come back to this place where you becoming a disciple. Well, you can do that online. Info at davidchapel.org. If you're not a member of our congregation and the Lord is speaking to you in this moment. Just send an email to info at davidchapel.org and we will follow up with you. Someone will have a conversation with you about how you can receive the Lord and how you can become a part of our congregation. If you have a prayer request, that same email address, info at davidchapel.org, we will get it. And we will respond to it. We'll turn it over to all of us who are engaged in prayer. My friends, remember now, this is a Palm Sunday experience. And we are indeed still saying, Hosanna to the son of David. If you've not been a part of our congregational prayer, go on our website. We are having prayer together. We are having prayer together on Friday evenings at 7 p.m. by Zoom, or you can call me at my telephone and join us. Just this past Friday, we had right at 100 households that were engaged in prayer with me. Discouragement has a dilemma. When you remember that God has not forgotten you, God has not failed you, and God is right now as you.
with me, please? Oh, merciful God, our Father, we right now claim that fact that you are able. I, I'm, I'm claiming that those who are touching their device, those who are touching their TV, those who have their arms outstretched toward me right now, we are claiming that you're able to do far exceedingly beyond whatever it is that we could imagine or think. We can be the church even physically away from each other. Speak to us right now, oh God, you're doing a marvelous thing. Even in the midst of what we are experiencing, we thank you, oh God, forgive us of our sins. For we agree with you those things that we have done that have been contrary to your will, your way, and your word is sin. We confess them. And in the words of 1 John 1 and 9, we believe you are faithful and just to forgive us. I know that there's someone right now who's uttering a request to you. There's somebody right now who has gone online and they have emailed already a prayer request. Oh God, we pray over that right now. I don't have the power to deal with it anyway. You do, you know what it is that he or she is facing. We pray, oh God, that you will reveal yourself mighty and strong to them. Reveal yourself that you are aware of everything they experience. You are an omniscient God. You know everything. You are an omniscient God. You are there. You are all with us. Thank you, oh God, for the ones you gave the knowledge and the skills to even create this technology that we can use to still come into the homes and the lives of our worshipers on Facebook and on YouTube and however else they may be encountering you today. Thank you for those you have allowed to come out be a part of putting this on the people who are handling our sound, those who are singing and playing. Thank you for God. Cover them with strength. Pray for all of those who are, are afflicted by this virus, those of us who are touched and afflicted in any other way. And yes, oh God, I can't explain it all, but if they are in the midst of that, make yourself known to them that you are with them even there. For those who are facing suffering, for those who are aged among us, for our children, our college students, our teenagers who are at home, their parents, all who are trying to help them navigate this moment. Oh God, those who are without jobs, those who are fearful of their employment situation, oh God, make them know that you know everything, everything, everything that they feel and are going through. And even now, with that, we know you are able. Yes, Lord. So we close this worship experience right now using the words of Peter. Let us grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to him be the glory now and forever. Amen. See you next Sunday. Resurrection Sunday. And I'm going to talk to you about rethinking your pain. Rethinking your pain.